What up gangsters, Zachary, Make Money Mowing. Thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna be explaining to you guys today how it felt to start solo, make great money, to scale up, have workers, have employees, and how that felt, make more money, and ultimately why I decided to scale back down to being solo and why I've been happy ever since. I'm not saying that this is exactly what you should do, and I'm not saying that what I did is correct. I'm just sharing what I went through and also sharing the way that I view business. I feel like I'm an extreme introvert and I prefer to do a lot of things by myself. I like going on road trips by myself. I like eating by myself and I don't like telling people what to do. I don't like delegating tasks. You might be the complete opposite of me, but me personally, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I understand there's a ceiling on how much I can make with this type of mindset, but battery almost died. I understand there's a ceiling on how much I can make, but I'm okay with that because the money I make is great and it's enough for me to pay my bills, save money, have fun, and eat really good every single day. So instead of trying to chase more money compared to what I'm doing now, I like where I'm at because the stress is very low. I have a great work-to-life balance and I'm extremely flexible with my operation. I didn't have the goal or the desire to start my long hair business and grow it into a multi-million dollar company where I have commercial accounts all over the city. I never wanted that. I just wanted something that would allow me to quit my job and I got that, so I'm happy. But as my business started growing, as I started getting my name out and customers were starting to call me more and more, I had long hair companies, I had friends from school and I had older folks telling me that unless I scaled up, hired workers and got people to work for me and take some of the load off, I'm never gonna make money, I'm never gonna stay in business and I'm never gonna be successful. And I never believed that, but I was hearing it so much that it started to influence me. So that was my first mistake, I let it influence me. And I started hiring workers. And at first it was okay, I just had my friends working with me. Everybody was always asking if they could work with me, all my friends, and then I thought it was cool because I could pay them 10, 12 an hour and they got to chill with me and we got to work together. So it was cool, but that's not sustainable to anybody who's ever worked with family and friends. Um, I mean, it can be sustainable, but usually the person has other obligations and you're just kind of a free time thing. So I got rid of my friends and then I started posting ads on Craigslist and the Nextdoor app for helpers. And I had millions of people texting me, everybody wants to mow yards and make money apparently. And I would even ask them, what's your experience? Uh, where do you live? What is your availability? And I would ask all the screening questions. Maybe I could have screened better, but I just started hiring people. And out of maybe 20 people that I had, only one person was somebody that truly did a good job, truly had a good attitude, and somebody that I didn't mind being in the truck with. The majority of the other people, they were people that I would never ever let in my truck or have a conversation with or hang out with if there wasn't the exchange of money from me to them being involved. Um, half the time when I had all those workers, I, I didn't look forward going to work, having to sit uh, shotgun with me, these workers, and just to the stimulating conversation that we were having. It wasn't what I desired. And even if I was making more money with them, I didn't like it. And I missed being solo and just being able to work on my own. Another thing when I had workers, I had to scale up more. I had to take on more jobs. Uh, I had to take on more types of jobs I was doing big old corner lots, fields, and I was doing more landscaping such as sod, rock, mulch. I was doing all these things that I didn't prefer doing. I don't like doing landscaping necessarily, and I don't like taking on these big yards where I need a worker. But since I had a worker, I had to take all these things on to keep the worker busy so I don't lose him and then I have to hire again and it's a never ending circle. So that's another thing I didn't prefer about having workers. Um, Again, there's a ceiling, but I was making such good money solo at the time, and I make even more now being solo. Now that I've priced better, have better equipment, and I have a better skill with what I'm doing, I make even more money now, and my average hourly rate that I'm making now, compared to when I had worker, is the same, if not more, when I'm by myself, and the main thing is it's such more low stress. So ask yourself these questions. Why did you start, and what was your goal? My starting reason was I wanted something that would allow me to quit my job and be my own boss, and that's exactly what happened. What was my goal? My goal was enough to just stay in business and to just be happy and to make great money. So my goal, I didn't have a number amount. I didn't have the idea of being commercial as my goal. I just wanted to be able to have a good work-life balance and make good money and have the freedom to say, I don't wanna to work today if something happens, an emergency happens. I wanted to be in control of my day 24 7 and that's again what happened because having a long care business that's exactly what's going to happen to you as long as you stick with it continue staying consistent with your yards price good and the money and the freedom will come as long as you don't give up so the pros and cons quickly over being solo the main factor is low stress and that's why i pick solo you can make great money you're not dependent on any worker for their availability when you have a worker you're praying to god every morning that they're gonna show up and they say they're gonna show up, especially the night before, you're praying that they're gonna show up in the morning. 
Um, you have to depend on their quality of work. You have to double check it. Usually if you have a good worker, maybe you don't, but the workers that I had, the majority of the time I had to double check them. I didn't like having eyes in two different directions, making sure that they're also not damaging a property. The simplicity is always there when you're solo, as long as you know what you're capable of. Don't say yes to jobs when you're already running at peak capacity and you're stressing out. Tell the customer that you're full and you can refer them to another service or you just can't take them on until you find a balance. And if you want more work, then just pump up more advertising and just start taking on more yards. It's very simple. You work when you say you can work and everything is always in your control. You're not depending on any workers. You're not depending on anybody else in terms of their availability when they're supposed to show up at your job. You're not depending on their attitude when you're hanging out with them. You're not depending on damaging the property or the quality of the work. It's just all on you and you can make a certain amount of money that you can't make when you're commercial, but as long as you make enough like I do, then I don't need to keep chasing more and more money. I have enough saved up from my solo operation where I could just chill out and chase simplicity versus having money. You might be at a different point where you're still building up to that certain amount of safe money, but as long as you stick with it, you're going to hit that and then you're going to realize yourself that chasing more money isn't making you happier. You're just making more money, but your fulfillment and your satisfaction is staying at the same level. So the main drawback of being solo is you're only paid when you're working and you're doing the work by yourself. And you might differ, you might be okay with that like I am, or you might not be okay with that. But as long as you take on yards that you can take on comfortably, like I only take on yards 5,000 square foot or less, and they always, always take me 30 minutes or less to do the yard, including the drive time. And half the time I don't even break a sweat because I eat good, I exercise, and even though it's hot, I don't know, I feel like my body just ventilates properly. I don't get beat up, I'm not tired. I understand my ceiling again, but I'm okay with it because the money is more than enough to keep me happy and to keep me fulfilled. So you're only paid when you're working and you're doing the work yourself is the main drawbacks of being solo. But it's easy for you to save up enough money as long as you stick with it. I could not work for the next year and just not work and just make YouTube videos and that'd be okay with me in terms of my finances, but that wouldn't be okay with me in terms of my satisfaction because I want to work. So I'm working because I want more so I could have more comfortability to focus on making more videos for you guys so I can continue sharing everything because like I said, more money isn't going to make me happier. The reason I'm doing this YouTube channel and making these videos is so I can share my knowledge and also expand my experience with different skills and different programs rather than just physical mowing. I want to be good at internet marketing socializing, um, so social media-alizing, and doing all that other stuff. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Rants over, you're only paid when you're working, but you should be making more than enough for that's not a problem, because it's not a problem for me. So when you are having workers, having a crew, and having people doing work for you, that will be the only way to truly scale. The only way to truly scale is to leave your solo model and start hiring on workers little by little and to the point that you are stepping out of the field completely and you're having people do the work for you. That is the only way to truly scale. And as a solo operator, I can say that. And some people are different. You might have this as your goal and you might have this as your goal. You might be like me, you might be the opposite of me. So it just depends on your preference. That's the only way to truly scale. And even though you're making great money being solo, you're gonna make even more money having crews, having workers and having scale. And again, it's up to you. Do you wanna make this much money and just be on a whole different level? Or do you wanna make this much money and be straight, be set and not have to worry about your finances? It's up to you. So again, you step out of the field little by little. First, you have a worker with you. Then you have two workers with you. Then you have the two workers doing the work for you. And then maybe you have another person or you have another crew and copy paste. That's the only way that you're truly gonna step out of the field, but also realize that when you step out and your physical labor decreases, your mental labor increases, and you're gonna have a lot more on your shoulders, even though you're not doing the physical work now, right now. And if anything, the physical work is very, very easy. I can mow all day, every day, but the mental work, thinking about the scheduling, the delegation, the quality, thinking about the accounts that you have scheduled a month out, that's a lot more on your body than the physical mowing from mowing 10 yards in a row, if you can relate. So. You step out of the field and you're going to gain access to commercial accounts. You could have a commercial account doing residentials, but most people are going to prefer to do commercials because of the wide open areas, the less liability for damage with little sprinklers from little tiny yards on residential homes and having cars parked everywhere and stuff. You can trust a worker or a crew to do a lot more commercial work comfortably than you would to do 10 residential yards versus one big commercial yard. And when you have the commercial accounts, you're going to build a legacy. You can give your business to your son or your grandson. You could hire people whenever you want and you could have work in the winter. There's a lot of benefits to being commercial and having crews, but it just depends. Are those benefits worth the amount of sacrifice, the amount of effort, and inevitably the amount of stress that you have to attain for that money? You just have to find your balance of what is money worth to you and then you can find your answer. 
So the only true way to find the answer is going to be if you start solo and then you grow and have workers so you can play both sides of the field and you can see what you prefer and what you don't. You might surprise yourself or you might realize exactly what you thought about yourself. The only way is to try and again I'm not saying that you should stay solo or do what I'm doing. I'm just letting you know how I view things, what I experience and ultimately why having workers, having people um, asking me when's the next work day and having to keep these days filled with lots of mowing and lots of landscaping to having the responsibility of a worker looming over me and if I go out of town I gotta think about what's my worker gonna do and I have all these yards I gotta keep up with if a worker quits on me I'm gonna have to do all these yards by myself or I'm gonna have to hire somebody in a rush or I'm gonna have to do a lot of explaining or if I have a commercial account that signed on the dotted line that I'm gonna be there on these exact days but I can't show up because I'm short work or because an emergency happened and I can't cover it I cannot imagine that's a fun scenario to be in, but again, I never got to that point of having commercial crews and people doing their work for me the entire time, so I can't give you advice on that. But it's just something that ultimately I looked at the balance of the money I was making to the amount of effort and energy that it was requiring from me, and I found my sweet spot being solo, and I'm completely happy with it. And for this lawn care business, at least, I'm planning on staying solo, and for future businesses, whether it's online or having a brick and mortar, my opinions will obviously change and maybe I'll be more open to having a worker. But when that point comes, I will let you guys know. But for my solo mowing business, instead of desiring more and more, more money, more accounts, a bigger company, I just desire peace because peace is so much more valuable to me than simply just having more money in my bank account. And that's what I've learned in my experience being a business owner. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope it provokes some thought and can give you some guys insights on what I went through and let me know in the comments below your thoughts and what you experienced and what you plan on doing with your lawn care business. Stay tuned, peace out, see you in the next video.